In today's tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to create kinetic typography animations. So let's jump in. First, go to your project settings and make sure you have a project and timeline resolution of 1920 by 1080 at 23976 or 24 frames per second. Now, open the effects tab and under toolbox and effects, grab your fusion composition, drag it onto the timeline, close the effects tab and leave the fusion composition at five seconds. Let's jump into fusion. Let's drag the media out all the way here because we're gonna need the space. And let's grab a background node. Press F2 on your keyboard to rename it and let's call it BG Color. Now let's grab a merge node. Connect the background to the merge and the merge to the media out. For now, we're gonna leave the color to black. Press on your media out screen and press Control plus G or Command plus G on your keyboard to bring up the display guide. We're gonna need this to arrange the text. Next up, grab another background node, press F2, and let's call it BG underscore transparent. For this one, we're gonna grab the alpha channel slider and drag it all the way to zero so we have a transparent background. Now let's grab a text node, connect it to the background, press F2 on the text node and type in kinetic. Grab another text node, press F2 and type in typography. Connect it to the other merge node to generate a new merge node and this final merge node connected to merge one. Now, go to the kinetic node, type in kinetic, increase its size to 0.1, right click in the text box and add a follower modifier. Now in the timing tab, go to order and from automatic set it to left to right and the delay, double click and type in 1.5. Next up, go to shading, close properties because we don't need it and softness and open up position. Let's go to frame 15, set a keyframe on the offset X and Y. It will open up this path menu option. Just double click to close it because we're not going to use it and double click on follower one to open it up. Now go back to frame zero and decrease the Y axis until you reach minus three point something. Somewhere around here. Basically just move it out of the way, out of the screen. And if we play it back, we can see the first part of the animation. Now let's go back to frame 15 and this time go to text and for size we're going to type in 0.2, set a keyframe, go back to frame 0 and go all the way to 0. Play it back, boom, we got our animation. Now the first part of the animation ends at frame 24. So we're gonna go to tools now, set a keyframe on V anchor, which stands for vertical anchor. Go to frame 30 and type in 1.3. So now we have the lift. Next, set a keyframe on tracking. Go ahead two frames to frame 32 and increase the tracking to 1.3. Let's go back to frame 15, back to modifiers. Go ahead two frames to frame 17, set another keyframe on the size, so in modifiers text size, and go forward to frame 24, and type in 0.08. Now let's play it back. Perfect. Let's get back to frame 32 and type in our second text, which is typography. And let's match this text to the previous one by increasing the tracking slightly. Press and hold control or command on your keyboard and click on the value next to the slider to have a more refined control over the entire effect. Click on the media out screen, press and hold control or command on your keyboard and scroll up with your mouse. Now press and hold your mouse wheel to move the screen around. Again, control or command and click on the value and somewhat around here. Now go to the zoom range and click on fit. Next, go to V anchor and type in minus 1.3. Go to layout and add rotation on the X axis, type in minus 90. This will rotate the text on the X axis, negative 90 degrees, making it disappear. Set a keyframe on the x-axis and go to the zoom range and click on fit. Let's go forward six frames, bring the text up drastically. Go forward another six frames, bring it back, another six frames, bring it forward. And repeat this step until the x value reaches zero.
Let's play it back. Now let's close the inspector for a moment and open up the spline menu so we can refine our keyframes. Let's move the nodes so we can see them better by clicking and holding the mouse wheel and moving the panel. First let's click on kinetic and enable it. Control plus F or command plus F on the keyboard to bring in the keyframes. Box select everything and press F on the keyboard for flattening. Now let's disable the kinetic and enable the typography. Control or command F. Box select everything. F for flatten. Now box select all the keyframes except for the first two. And go down to the spline option menu and click on shape box. Now hover your mouse over until you get the double headed arrow. Click and drag it to the left. This will shorten the animation but keep its initial speed. So let's play it back. Perfect. Let's close out the spline menu and open up the inspector again. So our second animation ends at frame 70. So we're gonna start from here to scale down both texts, rotate them and move them to the left. So let's grab a text node, connect it to the merge one, F2 and name it animation and also type in animation. And we're gonna use this node as reference for the position and scale of our previous two texts. So let's go to size and increase it to point 126. Next, go to layout and center X, click and drag it to the right. We're gonna drag the text somewhere around here. Now go back to the transform node and let's set a keyframe for center, size and angle. Let's go to frame 80, for angle type in 90 degrees. Grab the center X axis and let's move it to the left, somewhere around here. And for size, type in 0.5. Now let's play this back. Good. Let's grab the animation node, go to text, and for V anchor, type in 1.5. Next, grab another text node, name it techniques, connect it to merge 4 to create a new one, type in techniques, set the size to 0.126. Let's go to layout and move the center X to match the animation node to some extent all right now back to text and the anchor minus 1.5 go to the animation node press and hold control on your keyboard and click on the tracking value and drag it to the right and try to match it with the length of the techniques node okay somewhere around here let's just move it to the right a little bit and increase it one more time holding control or command okay this should be good Go back to frame 75, click on the kinetic node, set a keyframe for color, go forward to frame 80, click on color, and select this cyan tone. Let's copy it, go to typography, text, let's set the color first, paste, set a keyframe, go back to frame 75, and change it back to white. Let's play it back. Good. Next, let's deactivate the animations and techniques node. Close the inspector and open up the spline menu. With the transform node selected, Control or Command F to bring all the keyframes in place. Let's make sure also size is fully active. Box, select all of them. F for flatten. Let's grab just the end keyframe of the size. And from frame 80, drag it all the way to frame 72. Grab the end keyframe for displacement and grab the handle and drag it all the way to frame 72 and let's play it back okay let's grab the end keyframe of the displacement again and drag it to frame 77 and play it back now it's perfect let's close the spline open up the inspector again go back to frame 80 connect the animations node just the animations node select it and we're going to use the right on animation option drag the endpoint all the way to zero set a keyframe let's go to frame 85 and bring it back to one now let's play this back all right this is good next set a keyframe here at frame 85 for size go forward two frames increase the size doesn't matter what value, go again two frames ahead 
and bring it back to point 126. Go back to frame 85, set a keyframe for color, move to frame 87, let's change the color to a neon yellow green tone and let's play it back. Okay, select the animation node, close the inspector, open up the spline, control F, let's deactivate the transform node, control F again to recenter the keyframes, box select everything, F to flatten, deactivate all and re-enable size, let's scale it up a little bit, select the middle keyframe, press and hold shift on the keyboard, click and drag it, just one frame back, so from 87 to 86. Grab the handle and extend it a little bit. Grab the other handle and shorten it. Now let's play it back. Perfect, now we have the pulse we need. Close the spline and open the inspector. So the pulse animation starts at frame 85 and ends at frame 89. So let's go back to frame 86 where the color starts to change. Connect the Techniques node to the final merge, select it, right click in the text box and add another follower modifier. Go to frame 90, next to modifiers, in the timing set order from left to right and the delay again 1.5. Go to shading, close properties and softness, open position and set a keyframe for offset X and Y. Double click to close path 3 because we're not using it and double click to open follower 2. Now let's go back to frame 85, click on offset Y and bring the text up. Let's play it back quickly. Good. Now we know that the first letter stops at frame 90, then the rest of the letters will come in. So let's go one frame ahead, set another keyframe for offset, go to frame 96, and let's drag offset Y on the negative until we reach the bottom rectangle. Now let's play this back quickly. Good, back to frame 96, go one frame ahead, set another keyframe, let's go to frame this time and bring it back to zero. Let's play it back. All right, close the inspector, open the spline, press and hold the mouse wheel to move the nodes so we can see the techniques node, deactivate animation and select techniques. Control or command F, box select everything, F to flatten and let's see. So frame 85, text starts to drop and stops. So select just these two keyframes and hit delete. Now back to frame 85 and let's see the animation. Okay, it goes smoothly down, comes back up. All right, let's, let's delete the first keyframe. Control or command F again, box select the last two keyframes. Let's drag him two frames to the left. So from 100 to 98. And let's refine the middle keyframe. Just select it, grab the right handle, drag it up and let's play back. Okay, too fast, that was way too fast. Let's bring it down a little bit and let's decrease the left handle. Let's see what happens. All right, that's better. So I'm going to do one last thing. I'm going to bring only the last keyframe back to frame 100. Let's play it back. Now we have a perfect smooth animation, but we still have to add one more thing. Close the spline and open the inspector. Let's drag the nodes into view. Our animation starts to drop from frame 87. So we're gonna go just one frame back to 86. Have the Techniques node selected and click on Rectangle to add a rectangle mask. Let's resize the mask to fit the text. Reposition it and click on Invert. Now click on Media Out to clear the screen of any indication of masks or other stuff. Next click on the Media Out screen and press Ctrl or Command G on the keyboard to hide the display guide and let's play it back. Perfect. Now the final thing, go to background color, change type from solid color to gradient, 
radian type from linear to radial start x type in 0.5 and end x type in 1.7 click on the left color choose a color let's choose a deep orange tone and for the right color from the first column on the left on the basic colors choose the purple and click ok and this is our kinetic typography animation now i got one final ingredient for this animation go to merge one settings check motion blur and change the quality from two to five let's play it back Now the final animation is completely finished. When it comes to kinetic typography animation, you need to remember these three ingredients. Keyframe placement, in order to determine your animation's flow. Keyframe timing, in order to synchronize multiple keyframes with each other to create complex animations. And keyframe customization, in order to make an animation smooth or change its speed or whatever crazy idea you get. And you need to use at least two of these ingredients at the same time, if not all three, in order to create good kinetic typography animation. And before I go, I want you to know that this is the last video of 2022. And with this, I want to wish you a happy new year and happy holidays. And as always, here are two playlists that will help you expand your creativity and help you along your creative journey. And until next time, stay safe and take care.